This is the sixth section of chapter 13 on integration and this section is about areas under the x-axis. So the first thing is if we were to use integration to find the area under the x-axis we will get a negative value. Now that means that we need to ignore this negative value as areas cannot be negative. That also means that areas above or below the x-axis need to be calculated separately. So here's an example, here's a graph. And let's say I want to know the area of this bit and this bit. So if I worked out the area of this part here, I would get a positive answer, which is fine. But then if I worked out the area of this little bit down here, I would get a negative answer. So I would flip it and turn it into a positive, and then I can add them together. So I'd need a limit from here to here and to do this integration, and a different limit from here to here to do this integration, change this to a positive, then add them together. Now, if I use the limits from here to here, then what would happen is this negative part would begin to cancel out some of this. And in fact, if you had a curve where maybe this bit at the bottom was the same area as this bit at the top, you'd end up with an answer of zero, which obviously doesn't make sense. Or even if you had the bit at the bottom here was bigger than this area, you'd end up with a negative answer. Again, doesn't make sense. So bits above and below the axis, calculate them separately, which means working out two integrations with different limits and anything below the axis, which will come out negative, change it to a positive before you add it to the area above the axis. Example 10. Find the area of the finite region bounded by the curve y equals x bracket x minus 3 and the x-axis. So we want to draw a sketch of this, but if we're going to draw a sketch, we need to find its roots. So um, it's already factorized. We're going to get the roots when x, x minus 3 equals 0. So that gives us the value of x equals 0, x equals 3. Now this is a quadratic, a u-shaped quadratic. So it's going to be this type of shape. Um, so let's have a look to see. So we'll draw our axis. So we've got our y-axis here, x-axis here. Sketch is not really necessary, but it does help us to see what's going on. So zero and three and a U-shaped quadratic going through there. Let's draw that in like this. So if we're finding the region bounded or like outlined, held in by the curve in the x-axis, that's this area down here. It's below the axis. So I'm expecting a negative answer, which I'm then going to have to flip the sign of. Right, so this area is going to be given by limits of 3 and 0 and integrating x, x minus 3 with respect to x. So the first thing I'm going to do is to expand the brackets. So I end up with x x squared minus 3x, which needs integrating. So now I use my square brackets. So x to the 3 divided by 3 minus 3x squared over 2 between limits of 0 and 3. Uh, don't really need to tidy it up. Um, let's just substitute in. That will be easier to do. So that will be um, 3 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 3 squared over 2 then minus 0 cubed over 3 minus 3 times by 0 squared over 2. So we'll work that out. So 3 squared over 3, that's 9 minus 3 times 3 squared 27 over 2 that gives me a value of minus 9 over 2 we we're expecting a minus because it's below the axis we ignore the minus and that gives us an area of 
9 over 2. Example 11, we want to sketch this curve with this equation here and find the area of the finite region bounded by the curve and the x-axis. So first thing we want to do is to find out what type of um, equation it is, what type of curve it is, and its roots as well. If we want to do a sketch. Well, this is a cubic and the coefficient of x cubed is positive, so it's going to be a cubic that forms that type of shape and its roots are going to be x equals 0, x equals 1, x equals minus 3 because it's already been factorized for us. So we'll do our sketch over here and then we can decide which bits are above the axis, which bits are below and how we're going to work out this area. So the roots 0, 1 here and negative 3 negative 3, so my cubic is going to go up through here, through there, down there, and back up there, so let's draw that in. So there's my cubic. I can see it forms two areas, this area here and this area here. The one below the axis is going to be negative. I'm going to call this area A and this area B. I need to work them out separately because one is above the axis, one is below. So I'm going to start by working out the area of A. So that's going to be limits of 0, negative 3, and it's going to be integrating this. So let's expand the brackets of that and see what it's going to be. So it's going to be x times by x squared plus 3x minus x, so plus 2x minus 3, and that becomes x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x. So we integrate x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x dx. Right, let's integrate that and see what we get. So we get x to the power 4 over 4 plus 2x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2 between these limits of 0 and negative 3. So now let's substitute them in and see what we get. What's it evaluates to so we have 0 to the power 4 over 4 plus 2 times 0 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 0 squared over 2 minus now we substitute a negative 3 so negative 3 to the power 4 over 4 plus 2 times negative 3 cubed over 3 minus 3 times negative 3 squared over 2. Now obviously the first bracket is 0 minus, now if we worked out the second bracket and I've done this already, this will give us negative 45 over 4. So then that gives us the area of A as 45 over 4. It's positive as we expected. So 45 over 4. Okay, let's now work out the area of B. We're expecting this to be negative. Now the only difference is the limits. The limits are 1 and 0. It's still the same function that we are integrating because it's the same curve. So um, it's just going to be the x to the 4 over 4 plus 2x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2 but with limits of 1 and 0. So let's substitute those in and evaluate what we get. So put the 1 in first. We will have 1 to the power 4 over 4 plus 2 times 1 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 1 squared over 2 minus, then we put a 0 in, 0 to the power 4 over 4 plus 2 times 0 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 0 squared over 2. So obviously the second bracket is 0, but we need to work out what the first bracket is. Now the first bracket basically becomes a quarter plus 2 thirds minus 3 over 2, which is minus 7 over 12. And then we're subtracting 0. So that's just negative 7 over 12. That means that the area of B 
is 7 over 12. Remember, we're expecting it to be negative, so 7 over 12. So the total area is the area of A plus B in my case. So that's going to be 45 over 4 plus 7 over 12, which gives us a final total of 71 over 6. So we'll leave the answer like that because it's exact. So areas above and below the axis need to be worked out separately, which does mean you need to work out limits, which may mean factorizing, it's already been done for us, but it may mean factorizing so you can work out what these roots are. So you should now be able to do exercise 13F on pages 301 to 302 of the textbook.